Hello, my name is Eric Ramirez, and our company is Exxon Mobil. All right, what is Exxon Mobil? Exxon Mobil is an American multinational oil and gas corporation. According to Chapter 2 in the textbook, multinational corporation is a corporation that owns businesses in two or more countries. Exxon Mobil is the largest publicly traded international and oil and gas company. Utilizes technology and innovation to help the world meet its growing needs for energy. According to Exxon's mobile page, Exxon Mobil has corporations in Indonesia and Qatar, to name a few. All right, Exxon Mobil background: the headquarters is located in Irving, Texas. Formed in 1999 by the merge of two oil companies, Exxon and Mobil. Exxon Mobil was the largest company, while Mobil was the second largest company. Exxon and Mobil were descendants of the Standard Oil, which was established by John D. Rockefeller. When Exxon, Mobil, when Exxon and Mobil merged, this was an example of synergy. In the textbook in Chapter 2, synergy is when two or more subsystems working together can produce more than they can working together. This, is, this merge resulted in the creation of the largest oil company in the world that allowed them to reduce their costs. All right, this image right here shows the financials for Exxon and Mobil before the merge in 1998. The financials for Exxon, the net income was 8.5 billion, while Mobil made a net income of 3.3 billion. The revenues for Exxon was 137.2 billion, while the revenues for Mobil was 65.9 billion. All right, this right here is the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for Exxon Mobil. The strengths, they have a strong dealing community and reliable suppliers. Exxon Mobil has built a culture among distributors and dealers where the dealers not only promote companies' products, but also invest in training the sales team to explain to the customers how he or she can extract the maximum benefits out the products. Now, Exxon Mobil has a strong base of reliable suppliers of raw materials, thus enabling the company to overcome any chain supply bottlenecks. For the weaknesses, they need more investments in new technology. Investments in research and development is below the fastest growing players in the industry. Given the scale of expansion in different geographies, the company is planning to expand into ExxonMobil's needs to put more money in technology to integrate the process across the board. Right now, the investments in technology are not up to par to the vision of the company. Investments in research and development is below the fastest growing players in the industry. Even though ExxonMobil is spending above the industry average on research and development, it has not been able to compete with the leading players in the industry in terms of innovation. It has come across as a mature firm looking forward to bringing out products based on tested features in the market. The opportunities that ExxonMobil provides is stable free cash flow that provides opportunities to invest in adjacent product segments. With more cash in the bank, the company can invest in new technologies as well as in new products segments. This should open a new window for opportunities for ExxonMobil and other product categories. New trends in the customer's behavior can open a new market for the Exxon, for ExxonMobil. It provides a great opportunity for the organization to build new revenue streams and diversify into new products categorized too. And now threats. The company can face lawsuits in various markets given no regular supply and innovative products. Different laws and continuous fluctuations regarding product standards in the new markets is what brings up the new lawsuits that they could face. Over the years, the company has developed numerous products, but those are often responses to the development by other players. Secondly, the supply of new products is not regular, thus leading to high and low swings in the sales numbers over a period of time. All right, Exxon uses total quality management, which is defined in Chapter 18 as an integrated principle based on opportunity-wide strategy for improving product and service quality. TQM is a philosophy that is characterized by three principles, customer focus and satisfaction, continuous improvement, and teamwork. This right here is the slide showing customer focus and satisfaction. Exxon Mobil's goal is enhancing the customer's experience, ex developing the products that helps customers reduce their emissions and improves their energy efficiency, and has built its reputation as a technology leader over many decades through extensive testing and product evaluations. Exxon Mobil has developed the natural gas, chemicals, materials, fuels, and lubricants. 
and it also has improved gasoline that enhances vehicle performances through a preparatory additive formulation with seven key ingredients that helps remove intake value de deposits, which leaders with leads better gas mileage. In chapter 16, values is defined as a customer's perception that the product quality is excellent for the price offered. ExxonMobil's core values consist of work flexibility, safety and security, recognizing human rights, integrity, diversity, and inclusion. ExxonMobil exploits their guide principles to bring affordable energy to contemporary global markets. They have been critical in creating a unique culture that ensures everyone re respects each other and complies with the working ethics to contribute to the overall growth of the corporation. That's a fact. ExxonMobil competitive advantages. Low cost of capital and its economies of scales. Overhead required to run a global energy juggernaut is carried by operation totaling yearly revenues of 400 billion. Exxon can achieve operation margins, 13.2%. Others can only dream of. Small operations have a lot of problems achieving similar operation margins. Exxon healthy cash flow, huge market cap, diversified operations, and reputation also allow it to drill the capital markets at a rate that is hard to obtain for others. This gives another advantage over smaller and less efficient competitors and allows the company to continue to outperform. Exxon is well known for the ability to return large market shares. That's a favorite of mine. With the environment changing each and every day in negative ways, Exxon Mobil has taken upon their hands and invested over $1.5 billion over the last six years to improve efficiency and reduce greenhouse emissions. In the past 10 years, we have reduced greenhouse gas emissions and our operations by more than 7 million metric tons. That's like 1.7 million cars off the road. Now you may be wondering, is that some of a decentralized company or a centralized company? Well, to know the difference between the two, a centralization company is a company that relies on one person to make decisions. The location of the authority is mostly in the upper levels of the organization. Decentralized is more of a team environment. It's different levels of authority. The location of a significant amount of authority in a lower level organization. To answer the question, yes, ExxonMobil is a decentralized company. That means that with the management structure, the manage management of the subsidized areas have wide authorities to act in the best interest of their company. The multinational structure allows for decisions to take process and very close to the business and is responsible for the market needed. Right here is a market multinational corporation. And with this over here is a functional corporation where only one person makes the decisions on like a multinational or multiple people in different levels of the organization makes decisions. ExxonMobil is an American multinational oil and gas corporation. It has global consistency and some of its subsidiary companies include Esso, Mobil, XTO, Energy, and Imperial. Imperial is a subordinate to well it's subordinate to Exxon Mobil and is the second biggest oil company in Canada. The Exxon Mobil Corporation has a 69.6 owners ownership stake in. Exxon Mobil is incorporated in Texas and is one of the world's largest companies to be known by its revenue. Since 1996 Exxon Mobil has managed to make itself known as one of the largest publicly traded companies by the market capitalization. Exxon was ranked 10th most profitable company in the Fortune 500 in 2017 and second in 2018 of the largest U.S. corporations by its total revenue. Numbers don't lie and here we have from 2008 to 2018 some of its revenue, net income, total assets, price per share, and employees. Sometimes this can be known as part of what the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission does. They have a three-part mission and it's pretty much to protect investors, maintain fair, orderly, and efficient markets, and facilitate capital formation. Exxon was ranked 10th most profitable company in the Fortune 500 in 2017 and second in 2018 of the largest U.S. corporation by its total revenue. 
Numbers don't lie. And in the, from the year 2008 to 2018, we have the total revenue, net, com, in, net income, total assets, price per share, and employees. Some of ExxonMobil's biggest shareholders include the Vanguard Group at 8.15%, BlackRock at 6.16%, and State Street Corporation at 4.83%. ExxonMobil is one of the world's biggest oil companies around. And sometimes it's very important for them to benchmark, which brings me to my next slide, which is also kind of part of what the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has. It's a three-part mission, which those numbers that you just seen, the revenue, total assets, and all of that, include things that the Securities Exchange and Commission takes part in. They help protect investors, maintain fair, orderly, and efficient markets, and also to facilitate capital formation. To benchmark a little bit, Shell is one of Exxon Mobil's competitors. And so I wanted to give you a quick picture of the revenue that Shell brought in, which is 396.6 billion, while the revenue for Exxon was 290.2 billion. Production, we can see that actually Shell brings in 3.9 million barrels a day, while Exxon brings in 2.4 million barrels a day. The employment, as we can see, Shell has more slightly 81,000 and ExxonMobil has 71,000. Other purposes that ExxonMobil have include furniture, clothing, fertilizer, plastics, those little plastic capsules that your grandmother's medicine might ha have, um, hold her medicine in, I'm sorry, is actually wouldn't exist if it wasn't part of ExxonMobil's oil and gas corporation designing those. Just to give you a little more information, fun facts about ExxonMobil. Also, we take a look at the world um, <clears throat> gas stations around the world. Shell has 43,000 stations, and in the U.S. alone is 14,000. We see right here there was a peak with Exxon Mobil, 48,000 stations. However, in 2009 they cut them by 19,400, and now alone they have 28,600. In the U.S. alone, there's 12,000 stations. Benchmarking, again, like I said, is very important for a company to do so that they can kind of see where they are along the competition. And if a company wants to maintain a lead in the industry, it's very important that they do these type of things. And this is why ExxonMobil maintains its lead in the biggest oil and gas company and is one of them that's still around today. Thank you.